The MCAT is hard and the MCAT is important. That's why it matters how you prep and not just how much you prep. So in this video, I'm gonna show you guys how to study for the MCAT, creating your own study tool outline without paying all the big bucks. Let's jump right in. What's up YouTube? Hope you're having a great day. My name is Jason Kras. In this video, I'm gonna share my Excel file in which I created my own MCAT study plan. So this plan came majority from Reddit. I was able to tweak it in order to accommodate it into my own study routine. So a little bit of a backstory. I took the MCAT twice. The first time I took the MCAT, I used the Princeton Review Ultimate MCAT plan. And now I didn't know what really goes into MCAT studying. I was definitely unprepared and crammed it in in under three months. And my MCAT score really showed that. So I had to retake it, but this time under different conditions. I was working full time, a nine to five job and studying for the MCAT. So that's how I made my study plan. It's roughly a six month plan and you guys can adjust it as you see fit. You can combine days and spread them out. So let's jump into this Excel file. I'll leave a link down in the description below. So first and foremost, the things that I wanna know are the resources that I used. My resources in studying were the Princeton Review books. You guys can change that out for Kaplan, the Berkeley Review, or whatever it may be. Second, I used UWorld and their MCAT study questions. And third, I used Anki as my flashcards. So I have these three resources, and I'm gonna show you guys how I incorporated them into the study plan. So I split up my study plan into three main phases. The first, content review. That was building up on all the foundations of the MCAT study material. You can use the AAMC's website and they will give you a foundations list of important things to cover. During this content review phase, I was relearning all the material that I had already learned during undergrad, as well as learning some new material that wasn't necessarily covered in my lecture courses. So I have broken it down in this phase one section. So in my own work, I broke it up into A days and B days. Now this is my own personal preference and you guys can adjust this as you like, but on A days I covered bio, biochemistry, and psych soch. On B days, I covered gen chem, o -chem, and physics. And now these three materials I would repeat and review and alternate on the different subtopics. In A1, the biology covers circulatory and respiration, DNA and the gene. Biochem covers amino acids and proteins. And PsychSoch covers demographics and social structures. I've even attached the page numbers that are used in the Princeton Review. Now all you have to do is look them up in your Kaplan books or whatever other books you use and alter the page numbers. And looking at the days that I have listed here, it shows that I spend two days on every A or B day. So I had two days to read all the material pull all the new Anki cards, as well as take notes and do practice problems within the Princeton Review book. Now this was almost a time period to get yourself into the mindset of MCAT studying, and so that way you're ready for when practice problems really come at you hard. So to cover the Anki cards, what did I use? What's Anki? I'll create a whole nother video on what it is, but in essence, it's a, it's a free flashcard type study tool. There are a lot of people that have already gone through all of the AAMC material and they've created their own flashcards for you. I've left the link down below in the different types of decks that are commonly used as pre-made decks. And so you can go through and select which ones. I personally use the Miles Down Anki deck. I felt that one was the most beneficial, but there are so many others out there and they all cover very similar material. So I'll leave this link in the description below. So as we move down this file, we get into section or phase two. Phase two is primarily UWorld practice problems. You're trying to get in as much practice as you can and cover as much material as you possibly can. The same kind of idea applies, but one thing that I did deviate from the schedule listed here is instead of spending a full week on A and a full week on B, I would alternate the dates. So the pattern would go A1, B1, A2, B2, A3, B3, and so on. So within this, I would match up the units or the topics with the topics that I had covered in my Princeton Review books. I've even gone so far as to note 
how many problems are in each section, as well as the total number of problems that I do in the week, the number that I would do on Monday through Thursday, and how many per section I would have to do per day. So to note here, I would do practice problems from one, I would do practice problems from Monday to Thursday, take a break on Friday, Saturday would be test day, and then Sunday test review, and then go on and continue. I have noted lower here that the tests start during my week eight and go on through studying. So what did I use to take my practice test? I used the next step material as well as AAMC's practice tests. I thought the next step material was the closest and most accurate to the actual. Now I would say within those tests, the first few, I'd say one through five are very similar. And then once you go from six to 10, they are not as similar to the AAMC material. And that's just because they haven't had enough questions with AAMC changing their test type in the last five years. So once you go through all these different subsections and you go through all your practice problems and you get closer towards your test date, that's when you wanna shift over to the AAMC material. That way you're in the same mindset, you start to understand how the test writers write and you're prepared for the test itself. So in this section, I've done a similar type of breakdown on the number of questions and the number of questions per day that you'd want to use. It's recommended that at least a month out from test date, you start to switch over to AAMC material and you guys can see that listed here. So that way I got into the mindset right on test date and so I was ready to go. So how did I break up the actual material that I was going to study with AAMC's material. They do have quite a lot with question packs, an OG study guide, and a section bank. So as you guys can see here, I spent one week on the OG, the original guide for the MCAT, covering topics there. Then I went to the section bank, reviewed those questions. To note, the section bank is notoriously more difficult than the actual test. Keep that in mind when looking at your right and wrong answers. Then I went through the massive Q pack or the question pack of questions that AAMC offers. So to note here in the cell, I said go ABA style. So that's referring to what I did previously in phase two. I would alternate between the A days and the B days to make sure that I was covering all the materials and offset the material topics in that final two weeks before my test date, I reviewed my section bank and went through all those problems again, being that they were notoriously difficult and seeing that I had so much practice under my belt, I felt that I would do better on these problems. Then I left myself two weeks as a pure and thorough review. This was primarily for the actual practice test that I took. I would go through and re-review the material. That being said, I had already gone through the practice test to see what I had gone wrong. Now in those last two weeks, I reviewed what I had gone right and wrong again, focusing very much so on the AAMC material. So that way I knew how do those test writers come up with their questions and how do they go about it? So you guys can adjust this schedule and template as you see fit. The last thing that I wanna know in going through on how to come up with an MCAT study plan is what other things that I do that I felt helped me get over the edge to end to reform as well as I did on the MCAT. Now, the one thing that I'll say is vital is mental and physical health. So for physical health, you know, make sure you guys go get your exercise, even if it's going out for a walk or going to the gym like I did. Getting yourself out of studying and your blood flowing through your body will help you tremendously. Second, the MCAT feels like such a massive test that's a barrier between you and medical school. So and that can be a lot of stress on individuals, myself included. I felt very overwhelmed with all the material and sometimes when you don't see your practice scores going up, it hurts tremendously. So how do you get over the mental part of the game? I meditated every day and meditated especially on test days. What did I use to meditate? Headspace is an amazing program that offers a free and paid service. Headspace allows people to cover in different topics of meditation. There's topics for pre-game, so anytime you're gonna go and, and compete athletically, how do you get yourself into the right mindset? There's sleep, how do you prepare your mind to go to sleep with so much going on during the day? And others include stress, friendship, loss, and so much more. In the description below, I'm gonna leave my buddy link, so that way you guys can join me and ensure that we push ourselves 
to keep our mental health there and strong in supporting each other in meditating every day. So I'll leave a link down below to resources that I used and how I was successful in studying for the MCAT. So please be sure to like and subscribe and hit that post notification bell. Helps grow the channel tremendously. We're on the road to a thousand subscribers. We just hit a hundred and I can't believe that we did it. So we're trying to reach 1000 subscribers. Help me get there. So I'll see you guys in the next one as we embark on the journey of MD in the making.